Welcome to a video on learning Twine. In this video I'm going to cover hooks in Harlow. Harlow uses a concept called hooks. A hook can be thought of as the content affected when used with other macros and functionality. It is defined by an opening bracket and a closing bracket. And we see here this is a hook is in a different font. Let's pause here and go look at the code of this passage. Looking at the story map view, I'm going to pull up the content of the passage at the beginning. As we saw here, it starts with a content that I read out loud, and then has the font macro, followed by content that's in opening and closing bracket. This is a hook. A hook, again, is think about the content affected. And so when paired with the macro font here, the content affected is the sentence, this is a hook. And it's changed to the font courier new. Down here, we have the set macro setting the value of the variable x to 2. And then we're using the if macro here as another example. The text is only displayed if x is 2. It is also a hook. And as we see, if we come back to the presentation, we see the same text. This is another example of a hook. Again, the content affected. First is an example here using the font macro. The second is using the if macro. In both cases, the content is bracketed with an opening and closing bracket. It is the content affected by that macro or other functionality. Let's move on then. Hooks can also be named. In Harlow, when paired with a name tag, the hook is then named, meaning it can be referenced by other macros. I have two examples here. I'm going to start at the bottom with this is another hook and notice it is a link. If I click it, we see this is another hook and now it has new content. Right above this, if I place the cursor over this, is replaced with new content. Both of these are examples of using hooks with name tags so that they are named and can be referenced by other macros. Let's go look at the code for this. Closing this passage, coming in the, pass in the story map view, pulling up the passage named hooks, we see the content I read followed by two different hooks each with an example of different ways of writing name tags. In the first, the tag, starting with the less than sign, ending with the bar, is here and points to the hook, in this case pointing to the left, and the same example, and the, another example here, the second underneath this, points to the right. In both cases, it starts with either a less than or greater than sign and the bar. That is the tag, the name is in the middle, and it composes both together a name tag. It also gives a name to that hook. So this hook has a name called one name and this hook has a name called another name defined in both cases with a name tag. What that allows us to do is again reference those hooks and other macros. And I have two examples of here at the bottom of this passage. The first of which uses the mouse over replace macro in Harlow, which is a combination of both a mouse over effect, that is, react when the cursor is over some content, and the replace macro, which says to replace some existing content with some other content. Harlow has several combined macros in this case, mouse over replace being one example, and as I'll talk about in a second, click append is another. But in this case, use the question mark, and then the name of the name tag, of that named passage, or that named hook. So notice, when I place the cursor over this, it lets me know one name matches one name. So we see here, we can use this name tag, referenced this name tag, which is the name of this hook. So we can affect the content of this hook using this macro, using this name. And here we saw when the cursor was placed over it, the mouse over was over it, it replaced this is a hook with the content new content. Secondly, and as I discussed, click append is another example of combined macros that Harlow gives you. Click append, similar to mouse replace, if I click the link, it then appends content. Again, using the name of that name tag, another name, in reference to this hook. So when I clicked on this is another hook, it appended the content, this is another hook, and now it has new content. Those were appended together. And now, now it has new content was appended at the end. 
These are two different examples here, mouse replace and click append. Harlow has a number of other ones that react to different things called within Harlow sensor macros that respond to different effects, clicking and mouse over and effects like that. And it, but in each case, and combined here with the concept of hooks, they react to the name tag. So one name here, another name here. In both cases, with one name pointing to the left, giving a name tag to that hook, another name pointing to the right, giving a name to that hook. This is a review of how to use hooks in Harlow a very general review of how hooks are thought of as the content affected and are used with a number of different macros in Harlow. As I've shown here, you can use it with the font, the if macro, as long, along with other sensor macros like mouse over and click, mouse over replace and click append in these two examples. All of which are a review of how hooks work in Harlow. Combining again the content affected with some other functionality, a macro or something like that similar in Harlow. Thanks for watching.